Welcome to the official ABA Law Student Podcast, where we talk about issues that affect law students and recent grads. From finals and graduation to the bar exam and finding a job, this show is your trusted resource for the next big step. You're listening to the Legal Talk Network. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the ABA Law Student Podcast. My name is Ashley Baker. I currently serve as the Law Student Division's Delegate of Communications, Publications, and Outreach. I'm also a 3L at Southern University Law Center. One of the most pressing questions for law students is what can they do with their law degree? Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Ms. Galen Burroughs. Ms. Burroughs is Senior Policy Counsel with the Leadership Conference on Civil and Human Rights. She has a background that includes the implementation of policy priorities, focusing on reproductive health and rights, women's economic empowerment, the implementation of violence against women, and global women's rights. Ms. Burroughs was also a law professor at Fordham Law School. She earned her bachelor's degree from Yale University and her Juris Doctorate in LLM from NYU. Ms. Burroughs, thank you and welcome to the Law Student Podcast. Thank you for having me. So let's start off with one of the most basic of questions. For those that don't know, could you tell us what the Leadership Conference on Civil and Human Rights is exactly? Sure. The Leadership Conference is actually a coalition of more than 200 national organizations all working to promote and protect the civil and human rights of all persons in the United States. So we use advocacy at the federal level to push for policies that will help create an America as good as its ideals. That's incredible. So has civil rights work always been a passion of yours? Because I know when I came into law school, I knew I wanted to make a difference. And I'm just wondering if it was the same for you. I think so. I don't think that I necessarily thought of it as civil rights work. I was really motivated by education and equity and came to understand that that was civil rights work um, while I was in law school, but also the broader issues of uh, how different structural um, forces impact people's access to education, people's access to economic security, people's access to the ballot box, people's ability to raise their families in safe and healthy communities. And so, Mm -hmm. yes, I was always motivated by this need to help people and contribute in some way. Um, But I didn't fully understand what that looked like until I went to law school. So I think that's like a lot of people who really just want to do something really good and productive and make a difference, but have to sort of find their niche or how they're going to do that. And law school can be a really good way of sort of honing in on the things that interest you the most and figuring out how to actually implement um, your vision for what a just world will look like. Okay. So what advice do you have for law students that want to make a difference, that want to work in these areas that you spoke about? You can start doing the work now. There's no reason to wait. So there are lots of student organizations to join as a law student that do work on the local level, um, that do work at the university level, and that do advocacy work at at the state and national level. So there are lots of different types of things that you can do. One, if you are interested in sort of federal advocacy, lobbying, there are different organizations that you can link up to that have lobby days, especially for students. Um, You can create your own lobby days. Um, You can uh, join different groups of different political persuasions um, while you're in law school. But also, I think that law school is a really good time to intern. So when I was in law school, I took the opportunity to intern at several different organizations that did civil rights work, but in different ways. So I interned at a federal advocacy group that's similar to the Leadership Conference uh, here in D.C., but I also did work uh, abroad. Um, so I did human rights work in Ghana, where I was doing policy work, but also helping with direct client work, direct service. And I also did some work with 
an anti-trafficking organization in New York City that was also more direct service, but combined some policy work. So you can do different things now. You don't have to wait. Um, in fact, the Leadership Conference has an internship program also that um, accepts both law students and undergraduates and exposes interns to the broad um, swath of work that we do here, um, including field and comms, but also including policy work. And you'll get a lot of experience on the Hill and um, be able to track and cover different policy areas that are of interest to you, but also see how those areas connect and intersect with other issues. Wow, that sounds incredible. So let's turn back to what you do with the Leadership Conference on Civil and Human Rights. What is it like being senior policy counsel, and what do you do in that role? So I'm really lucky in that I get to work with a diverse group of coalition partners on economic security. So I work on all aspects of economic security, including employment, um, but also the right to work with dignity, the right to work with safety, the um, right to really be able to enjoy economic justice in this country. Um, And specifically with our coalition partners, I review legislation, I advocate on the Hill, and I engage in education of both members of Congress, but also with um, our other partners on issues related to economic security. So for a law student that's looking to work with your organization What skills should they be developing now while they're in school to direct them in that path? That's a great question. Um, I think that analytical skills are super important, and that is really the backbone of law school. But also the ability to read and analyze legislation is key. Um, Reading a legislative text or a bill is very different from reading an article or a judicial opinion. So laws are written sort of like instruction manuals, and so it requires a special kind of skill to be able to read bills. I also mm-hmm. think that it's important to be able to work collaboratively with other people. And sometimes law school is super competitive and doesn't necessarily lend itself to collaboration. But I think that that is an important skill for the type of work that I do. Well, Ms. Burroughs, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to enlighten us about what you do. And I know that I've learned so much from our conversation, and I'm sure our listeners have as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. So how can law students learn more about the Leadership Conference on Civil and Human Rights? You can visit our website, civilrights.org, and learn about our programs there, including our internship program and the other work that we do. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Law Student Podcast. I would like to invite you to subscribe to the ABA Law Student Podcast on iTunes. You can reach us on Facebook at ABA for Law Students, and follow us and all of our law student leaders at hashtag ABA for Law Students on both Facebook and Twitter. Signing off, I'm Ashley Baker. Thank you for listening, and I'll leave you with this quote by Eleanor Roosevelt. Where, after all, do universal human rights begin? In small places, close to home. So close and so small that they cannot be seen on any maps of the world. Unless these rights have meaning there, they have little meaning anywhere. Without concerned citizen action to uphold them close to home, we shall look in vain for progress in the larger world. If you'd like more information about what you've heard today, please visit LegalTalkNetwork.com. Subscribe via iTunes and RSS, find us on Twitter and Facebook, or download our free Legal Talk Network app in Google Play and iTunes. Remember, U.S. law students at ABA-accredited schools can join the ABA for free. Join now at AmericanBar.org forward slash law student. The views expressed by the participants of this program are their own and do not represent the views of, nor are they endorsed by, Legal Talk Network, 
its officers, directors, employees, agents, representatives, shareholders, and subsidiaries. None of the content should be considered legal advice. As always, consult a lawyer.